This episode deals with the death of a child. Details are extremely disturbing and graphic. Viewer discretion is advised. Baby Sterling died of malnutrition, dehydration, and severe infection from diaper rash. His parents left him in a dark, hot room for almost two weeks, with nothing to look at but a wall. No interaction, no care, even the most basic needs weren't provided for. Zachary Cohn, 27, and Cheyenne Harris, 20, resided in Chigasaw County, Iowa, in the town of Alta Vista. They lived in a two-bedroom apartment with their two-year-old daughter, Nala, and four-month-old son, Sterling. For two years, Zachary Cohn and Cheyenne had an on-and-off relationship. They would meet up for sex and would take meth together, get clean, and then start the cycle all over again. It was during one of the cycles that baby Sterling was conceived. Sterling Daniel Cohn was born on May 1, 2017. His birth was unplanned and unconventional, and that he was born in a bathtub while Cheyenne was at a party at a friend's house. Cheyenne had gone into the restroom some time at that night and was surprised when she realized she was in labor. The partygoers placed her in the bathtub. It was there that Cheyenne gave birth to Sterling. And what's the baby's name? Sterling. Sterling? Yeah. Sterling. Like Sterling he was born in the bathtub. So he had some breathing issues at first. But they got in a little bit. He was looking straight ahead with blood in his mouth, hands clenched. His eyes were wide open when he died. His diaper hadn't been changed in about 9 to 14 days. He died lonely, in fear, and in so much pain in a baby swing. His urine and feces had attracted insects that then laid eggs on that diaper. Those eggs hatched into maggots while he was alive. The combination of stool, urine, and insects ate at and ruptured his skin, causing his body fluids to ooze out and bacteria to enter into his bloodstream. Please state your first and last name and spell them both for the record. Did you receive a 911 call at 12.55 p.m. on August 30th, 2017? Yes. Was that call recorded? Yes, it was. Chickasaw County, 911. Judge, is that Cohen? Do you need an ambulance sent out here to my apartment? Okay, what's your address, Zach? 107 South Hilltop Avenue in Alta Vista. Okay, what's going on? Uh, around 9, my girlfriend went to uh, feed our son, and then uh, about 11 or, or 11.30, she went to check on him, and he was gone. Gone, meaning? He died. Okay. He was like, he was like uh, probably four months. I don't know if it's sudden death syndrome or what. Okay. So you live at 107 South Hilltop and 8 in Alta Vista? What? At, um, Apartment 7. Apartment 7? Okay. And your son is four months old? And the last time they, they, you was checked on was nine? No, it was, it was you said in at nine. Okay. And uh, she didn't have any... Uh, she went to check on her and heard him cry or whatever, and it was probably about 11.30, 11.40. She uh, went to check on him. He, he passed away. Okay, so that's the last time they checked on him. Okay, what's your phone number there, Zach? Uh, 406-223-2193. Pretty sure the last time they checked. How you just keep okay. me up? So I'm okay. in shock. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'll get them paged out, okay? I'll, I'm going to send an ambulance and everybody up there, okay? <laughs> All right, thanks. thanks. The first responder, Tony Frederick, arrived in the apartment of Zachary Cohn and Cheyenne Harris on that very afternoon. Yep. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us your name? Tony Frederick. You received a call and it was about an infant, correct? Yes. How close were you to where you were supposed to go? Two miles. When you received the call, what did you do? I got in my car and went there. 
When we pulled up to the apartment complex, are we talking about three, four story high apartments? What are we looking at? You're looking at a brick one story building that's kind of like in a U shape with apartments on this side and they were straightforward. I saw, I saw um, a man and a woman and a child and uh, got out of my car and went running towards them and said, where's the baby? They didn't show any emotion or expression. Um, and then the man said, inside. And I said, show me. He took me inside and we walked through the living room and then we, uh, he took me to a back bedroom and it was dark and hot. It was stuffy. Um, and I was looking for a crib and I couldn't see anything. And I said, we've got to get some lights on in here because you couldn't see anything because it was dark. All right, so walking into the apartment, is this a big apartment? No, it's smaller. The living room is a regular, normal living room. The bedroom that I walked into was small. From where I was standing, you still really couldn't see the baby because the, the swing was in the corner of the room facing the outside wall. And so I went over to the baby because you had to get over in front of it in order to see him. And he was staring. He had a, his eyes were open and he was a blank stare. His pupils were fixed and dilated. That means he was just staring. And the pupils, there was like no reaction in him. He was just staring. Sorry, I don't mean to. His eyes were fixed and dilated and pupils should kind of sometimes move and his didn't. And he never blinked. He wasn't breathing, checked his brachial pulse. His arm was cold and stiff and he had what appeared to be blood around the side of his mouth. I, t I touched his chest, his, his uh, Clothes are kind of crusty. And then I, he had a blanket that was draped over him. And when I, when I touched that, there was like bugs that came up from that. Little natties, gnats that flew from that. The whole room was, it was hot and urine. It smelled, there was a stench of urine in the whole room. It was just a strong sense of, a strong smell of urine. There was one window on the outside wall, but there was, it was all covered up. There was no, um, like a blanket or something, or I don't know. It was just, it was covered so that no light or anything could come in. And so when I went to check the brachial pulse on him to pull his little arm down, I couldn't move it. It was rigid. And you're talking about his arm? Yes. Where, and he was cold. What were his hands like? They, they were clenched in a fist. My assessment is this this is this is not a baby who I can do CPR on. Did you at some point identify? What the baby's name. Yeah, Sterling. <laughs> Ma'am, if you could please uh, state your first and last name and please spell them for the record. Tina Shattuck, T-I-N-A-S-H-A-T-E-K. Yeah. I went around the block and I parked. And, and where I, did you park? I parked right in front of the apartment. And why did you do that? I was hoping I could help, if needed to be. 
And so did you see Tony get out of her vehicle? No, she was already in the room when I got there. What were you hoping to help with? Um, anything. And did you see the child? No, I did not. What did you see? I saw Tony um, kneeling down by it. And with just her expression, I knew that there wasn't anything I could do. She wasn't doing CPR. She wasn't doing anything. What was the child doing? It was in a baby swing. How was the swing positioned? I, towards the wall. Can you describe how the room felt? Um, the room was very warm. Um, there was no air. Um, it smelled. What did it smell like? Um, diapers. When you say diapers, you mean clean or soiled diapers? Soiled. How strong was the smell? Strong. And Tony directed you to go console the parent? Yes. And so you left the room? I turned around, because it's very small in there, I turned around and the parents were standing right there with their little girl. Where were they standing? Just right, right outside the bedroom. Can you describe the emotional state of Mr. King, the defendant? Um, quiet. No tears. That's the one you Yes. Why? Because... I would have been in hysterical. How long did you talk to Mr. King? Not very long. Did you stay in the apartment or go somewhere else? I left back on my route. Did you continue on your route? Yes. How did you feel? Sick. I got sick. I threw up down the road. Because it was terrible. Bad place to be at the wrong time. I did not help anybody, so I didn't need to be there. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury? Yes, my name is Dennis Klein, K-L-E-I-N. Dr. Klein, what is your occupation? I'm the state medical examiner and I'm a forensic pathologist. I'd like to talk about Sterling Cohen. You performed an autopsy on him on August 31st, 2017, correct? That's correct. Now, when you do an autopsy, what types of questions are you trying to answer? There are a number of different questions. The two biggest questions that we we're asked to answer is what is the cause of death and what is the manner of death? So cause of death uh, is defined as the uh, disease, the injury, the abnormality or poisoning that initiates or starts a series of dysfunctions in the body that ultimately leads to death. So if I am uh, shot in the head, what would my cause of death be? It would be gunshot wound of head. What does manner of death mean? So manner of death is a category of death uh, where a medical examiner uh, uses their medical judgment, gathering information uh, about the decedent and placing them in one of five major categories. And those categories include natural, accident, suicide, homicide, and undetermined. Natural is when a person's uh, death is totally due to natural diseases. An accident is when uh, a death occurs in which there is some uh, event that happens within the environment, but there's no intent or purposeful action either by themselves or other people to result in their death. Suicide is when uh, someone takes actions intentionally to cause their own death. Homicide is when another person uh, does uh, some action that results in another person's death, so they die at the hands of another person. And then undetermined is when there is not enough information in order to uh, determine with any degree of certainty one particular category over the other, and then it's left as undetermined. Do you have a, an opinion in this case as to the cause of death of Sterling Cohen? Yes. What is that? Denial of critical care. Do you 
have an opinion as to the manner of death of Sterling Palmer? Yes. What is that? Homicide. Do you hold those opinions to a reasonable degree of medical certainty? Yes. All right, so you ruled out any natural disease as cause of his death. There was no uh, genetics, uh, nothing like that, correct? Correct. Uh, we've heard testimony he was born one to two weeks early. Did that have anything to do with his death? I don't believe so, no. So fair to say there's three individual causes of death, dehydration, malnutrition, uh, and the infection from diaper rash. Is that correct? Correct. So which one of those things causes it? Um, any one of those three things could have independently caused uh, Sterling's death, but they were all present and uh, they all had a contribution uh, to his death. In section two, you had a, a severe diaper dermatitis and skin breakdown. Tell us about that. So dermatitis means uh, an inflammation of the skin and diaper referring to the area where this occurs. This is a, a, a medical terminology that really refers to severe diaper rash. And so what we were actually able to see is that the skin integrity was breaking down uh, to the point that some of that skin was starting to slough off. There was some dead skin. Um, and we could also see that it was very red and that that was an area that uh, bacteria would be able to enter into the body. And where did you see this on Sterling? It was over the uh, diaper area and extending over the areas of the diaper. So in and around the thighs, over the genitalia, the buttocks, and then uh, it was extending up to the mid portion of the back. So describe for the jury what you saw. So um, there, were, there was clothing, there was a diaper, um, and within the diaper there was uh, uh, feces that um, had the appearance of beginning to decompose, uh, so it had almost a sludge or sewage uh, type of appearance and consistency. It had been there a while? Yes. On section three, you wrote maggot infestation of clothing and swing seats. Yes. Tell us about your findings on that. So maggots are uh, one of the uh, life stages of flies. Flies will lay eggs on decomposing tissue, and then those flies will develop into, they look like little crawling worms, and they're called maggots, and then they'll go through other various stages. So we saw these crawling maggots present um, on the clothing, and then uh, Sterling was in a, a swing seat. We also saw it in the covering on the swing seat. Did you also see it on the skin? Uh, yes. If someone had claimed to have been with Sterling on August 29th, uh, Sterling was found on August 30th. Are you aware of that? Yes. If someone had claimed to have been with him on August 29th uh, and said that he was fed and diaper changed, do you find that to be possible from the evidence that you saw? The diaper that I saw did not appear to be have been changed uh, on the 29th because I saw the I did the autopsy on the 31st. The body was, uh, Stern was found and transported on the 30th. Um, so the diaper appeared to have been um, unchanged much longer than a day. In your opinion, the condition that Sterling was in, um, could he even have taken a bottle on the 29th? The condition that I saw Sterling at the time of autopsy, he uh, looked severely emaciated. Uh, he was severely de dehydrated. Um, he was severely underweight. You know, it's, it's hard to judge exactly what his movement capabilities were, um, but I suspect that if he were alive at that time, in order to revive him at that point, he would have needed uh, intravenous fluids and probably two feedings in a hospital. Both Zachary and Cheyenne were found guilty on all charges and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Both were denied the motion for new trials. Zachary Gold and Cheyenne Harris.